Hi, I'm Mark Brennan and I'm deep in the wilderness of the Acadian forest. Join me as we explore this amazing ecosystem. winter in the Acadian forest. On these snow-covered hills lies one of the most unique forest ecosystems in the world. These ancient woods are an emblem of the North Woods, where for millennia the endless cycle of birth and decay have carried on here, uninterrupted, in this living, breathing ecosystem. Everywhere the forest sleeps. Winter brings with it deep snow and a wonderful opportunity to travel by snowshoe. I have explored these forests on foot and by snowshoe for over 20 years. The long northern winter brings with it a serenity and silence and a stunning beauty that you have to experience for yourself. The forest at this time of year forces the best from you. Alertness, awareness and a deep respect. Lake surfaces freeze solid and within the sheltered woods a blanket of snow insulates the earth below. On the surface, mammals who have adapted to these harsh conditions eke out a living on protruding shrubs and trees. It is here in these forested hills we see the telltale sign of the moose, now on the endangered species list in Nova Scotia. A once abundant mammal of the deer family, its numbers continue to drop. Habitat alteration and disturbance are two of the causes of this decline. The moose in Nova Scotia is seldom seen these days as numbers decline. It is now mostly a remnant population. Towards the end of February, warmer days begin the transition to spring, and occasional southerly winds slowly release long frozen lakes. As winter releases its icy grip, the days grow long and the sun warms. South-facing slopes in the Acadian forest begin to melt with the approach of spring a time of renewal and awakening. Anyone who has walked within the Acadian forest at this time of year can feel the surge of life that is about to take place.
Humans have always had a close relationship with all of the seasons, but spring seems to capture our imagination like no other. As the rivers and streams melt and the first songbirds return, the forests come alive again, and as the early morning light filters through the canopy overhead, the morning chorus is already in full swing. We take great pleasure in being in these places, grateful that after a long winter, spring shows itself in many forms. But it is not only the avian species that respond to the warming days. The wild flowers of the rich forest floor bloom when the trees are still bare, taking advantage of the light. Flowers like the Dutchman's breeches, bloodroot, trout lily, or mayflower all adorn like a carpet in a rich tapestry of colour. A snake lies in a patch of warm sun after a long hibernation. It will be several months before the young of this garter snake are born. In the distance, a male rough grouse drums from his log perch on the forest floor. These experiences in nature shape us. They can forge a deep relationship with the natural world and a quiet sense of belonging to something bigger than ourselves begins to take hold. We come to understand that the species we share the earth with have value other than the values we place on them or as resources for our use. They have an intrinsic value all of their own. As early morning mist rises over a lake and a beaver busies himself, all around are the signs of a spring now in full bloom. And it is this flower, the Rhodora, the poet Emerson wrote. Rhodora, if the sages ask thee why, this charm is wasted on the earth and sky. Tell them, dear, that if eyes were made for seeing, then beauty is its own excuse for being. It seems that in every conceivable patch of water, the spring peeper is busy breeding. Flocking to vernal pools from the surrounding forest, they are among the first frogs to sing in spring. As spring begins in earnest, the lakes and wetlands come into their full glory with a vigour only seen at this time of year. The amphibian chorus of the tiny spring peepers can run all night. The sound is deafening. <laughs> 